Right, uh, good morning everyone. I meant to be live a few seconds ago just to give you a little bit of a run in and make sure everybody was here before I kicked off. But uh, the computer did its trick of freezing just as I was about to go online. So, okay, uh, on with the show a bit abruptly there with the cut off of the music. One day I'll sort myself out a nice sort of fader. Um, right, okay, so what have we got today then? Um, a uh, quick tribute to the actress Honor Blackman who died earlier this week. Um, we'll have a look at the new Zero from uh, the American electric motorcycle manufacturer. Um, I'll be talking about cleaning the motorcycle. And I just want to give you a quick heads up on uh, what's going on with Survival Skills 2. Um, we've hit a bit of a landmark in the last few days, and I've got some plans as well to uh, keep us all busy during the layoff. So, okay, without further ado, um, don't forget that uh, if you have something to say, um, you can... That's the wrong thing. Hang on a minute. Where was I? Uh, banners, that's what I wanted to show. Um, yeah, if you want to say anything, if you've got any comments, ask, um, uh, drop them off in the comment box here on Facebook. Um, I can't type and talk at the same time, but I will get back to you at the end of the show. And uh, if answer any questions or whatever you've got to say, I'll be interested to read it. Um Okay, anything else to say? Uh, don't forget um, that uh, that's the comment and question one. Um, you can catch up, that's the other thing. I'm sorry, I'm a bit of a muddle because I started very late, last second thing with a, a quick reboot of the computer. Um, if you've got, um, if you happen to miss the show anytime, whether it's this one, whether you have to leave or whether you come in late, uh, don't forget, you can catch up on uh, either here on Facebook on the live shows. Uh, there is a feed that you can see later. Or you can head over to my YouTube channel, which is uh, Survival Skills UK. Don't forget the UK at the end of it. Or what you're likely to get is uh, somebody showing you how to uh, shoot something with a bow and arrow or something like that. Um, okay, so just to remind you, you're watching Kevin Williams uh, live here uh, on it with Elevenses from Survival Skills. Okay, so right on with the first story. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to tell you a little bit about Anna Blackman. Now, um, you probably remember that she was famous for two roles: the motorcycle riding, black leather clad Kathy Gale in the second series of the TV series, The Avengers. Um, she rode a Triumph uh, Speed 500, apparently, in one of the episodes. Um, she also played the uh, infamous, in some ways, character of Pussy Galore in the Bond movies. Now, apparently, a uh, little story that she told um, one of the newspapers, um, the Americans were a little bit uptight about the, uh, the the name of her character, and so she had to be referred to as Miss Galore in all the promotional material. And uh, she said that she took great delight in using her full character name at every available opportunity while she was actually out there in the U.S. Uh, promoting the the film on television. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, prior to the Avengers, it turns out that uh, on a Blackman actually has uh, had a, a, a history of uh, riding motorcycles already. Um, it turns out that she was, um, a, as a teenager, she took on a job as a motorcycle dispatch rider in World War II. Now, I found this out through an online obituary, so I was a little bit, uh, a little bit surprised and also impressed. Um, now, the thing is, there were a lot of women dispatch riders uh, operating throughout the Second World War. Um, a friend of mine actually had a neighbour uh, who was a 
uh, well, female dispatch rider. And uh, I actually got to read her story of her career. Uh, she wrote it up as a, a document and uh, passed it out to a few friends. She didn't want to publish it and think it was worth it. But it was a fascinating read all the same. Um, and these riders um, basically had to take the job on because the men, obviously enough, were out there on the front line. So there was a definite, there was a shortage of of people able to take on these roles. So for much of the war, uh, dispatch ride jobs back in Blighty were taken on almost exclusively by women. And, and they ferried urgent messages around between um, units, between headquarters and uh, outliers. And um, it, it, the reason obviously was that a, a hand-delivered message was pretty damn secure. Um, anything going out over the airwaves could be intercepted, and anything intercepted had there was a chance the code in which it was uh, encrypted could be broken. Obviously, the uh, the, the allies managed to do that um, fairly well with um, German and Japanese codes through the war. So they were very conscious of the need for secure uh, delivery, even to units based in the UK. So um, that was her role. Um, the report that I read actually quoted an old MCN story uh, where she was interviewed by the Motorcycle News. And uh, she said, it was pretty dangerous because we were in the midst of war and had to mask the headlights during the blackout. Bombs were falling, but the roar of the motorbike engine used to drown out the sound of the doodle bug, so we never heard them coming. It all seemed terribly exciting to me. Yeah, I'm sure it was for a, uh, a you know a teenage a teenager. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, it Anna Blackman apparently continued to ride. Um, oh, long after that and uh, there were news reports showing her taking delivery of a honda cb 200 in 1975 just about time i got riding as it happens and uh, naturally she was wearing her signature black leather suit um anyway that's on the blackman she survived by children and grandchildren um so just a reminder uh what you're here to uh day um we are going to be looking at motorcycle cleaning um on the first of a probably a couple of items on that to see how we get on today for time um zero's new fared motorcycle i'll come back to that and talk about that uh, a little um but just the next story i just want to bring you is a bit of an update on what's going on behind the scenes with survival skills now obviously i'm in lockdown uh, along with uh, a lot of other people um looking out the window at the beautiful blue sky out there again um we have missed a couple of weeks of absolutely stunning spring weather um but uh, hey ho uh, needs must it looks like we're going to be locked down for some uh, more weeks if you followed the uh, announcements last night uh, you'll see that the uh, the lifting of the lockdown isn't going to happen after the three weeks that was initially proposed i thought that was always a bit of a bit of a, a wild a wild stab in the dark um but uh, it is going to go on for some considerable time so i will continue to work to bring you uh 11s live and i will continue with posting on facebook my normal written stuff as well um i've got a few other ideas as well which i'll come on to in just a second but first of all What's really quite rewarding, I think, from my perspective, is that uh, the Facebook page has just topped 6,000 followers. Um, we're also very close to 6,000 likes on the page. Now, I'm, um, I'm that is, I think, quite an astonishing number, uh, being frank about it. Um, I know that, that those figures don't represent everybody who reads my posts, but it does mean that enough people have actually come along to the page at some point to make a note of it and uh, to, you know, basically give it a click and um, bookmark it. Um, the page was set up all the way back in 2010, fairly soon after Facebook kicked off. Um, at the time, uh, I wasn't going to use it. I didn't use it. I, it was just an eye to the future um really making sure that anything uh like that that came up that may have been useful i i sort of nabbed the survival skills name because even even back in 2010 i realized that there were other other outfits out there trying to use the uh, survival skills term um so I, I got in there quickly um and grabbed grabbed the survival skills um 
the active posting actually started a couple of years later. Um, it was after some events on a bike forum I was a member of. Now, I won't go into the uh, the full ins and outs of what actually happened, but um, suffice to say that the, the, the forum was sold off to a publishing company, uh, which went down like a lead balloon with a lot of the members of the forum who, you know, not unreasonably felt that they had contributed to make it what it was. Um, anyway, what uh, was quickly discovered was that there was a, a small clause snuck in under the new terms and conditions that everybody had to sign to access the forum. And this basically said that um, anything that anybody wrote at any time, anywhere on that forum, wouldn't be their property, but it would be the property of the publishing company to do with what they pleased. Um, well, as you can probably imagine, that didn't go down too well either. Um, there were a lot of people, you know, not just me, but other motorcycle instructors in the forum uh, section that I used to moderate. There were other, quite a few other motorcycle instructors, um, IEM observers. Uh, we, you know, we, we had all sorts of people on there who were pretty knowledgeable, who'd all been busy contributing. We, of course, we weren't the only ones. There were other sections on that forum. Um, you know, there was a dirt bike forum. There was an engineering forum. There's a classic motorcycle sub forum all all there and everybody had been busy posting useful stuff for others to access freely and suddenly here's this publishing company come along and says actually we're going to snaffle all that well anyway what happened was um there was a sort of mass uproar and after a few days that part of the agreement was pulled um nevertheless it did make me realize that uh, i needed to actually be in a rather more control over what i was posting than that i was getting from uh, that forum. Uh, so um, about 2012, I activated the um, Facebook page and started posting up um, my original posts on Facebook. And then they were either linked or copied over to the forum. So basically, I, I, I kept control of what I was posting. I wasn't giving it away for nothing. However, there was a problem. Um, it dawned on me fairly quickly that whilst Facebook is a great um, way of communicating with people, uh, you have to be reading it pretty much there and then to actually see what's flashing down your timeline. Um, yes, you can bookmark the survival skills page on Facebook and come back to it like an ordinary web page, and that's generally what I recommend people do. But um, the if you want to search for a post, if you read a post and you think, oh, hang on a minute, there was a post about X, Y, or Z a couple of weeks ago, and you try to find that post on Facebook, it is next to impossible. Um, the, the the posts just scroll down on one long, 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 everlasting page, and of course, eventually, you bring your browser to a standstill. Um, so what I realised was I actually needed a separate um, separate um, archive uh, kept off Facebook as well. Um, so it didn't take me more than a few days to work that out. So almost immediately as I started posting, I began to keep those file copies on the PC. So every post I've ever written on Facebook, I think bar none, um, I actually have filed away on these PCs I've got here. So I have some plans for those. Uh, so watch this space. I will be coming back to that uh, in a very short order. Okay, so uh, what's going on today? Where are you? You are watching Elevenses uh, with Kevin Williams. Um, uh, one thing I'll just remind you about, again, I've just put them down somewhere. Where's my props? There they are. Don't forget, if you can't ride a bike at the moment, you can uh, start again. If you can't ride a bike you can read about biking and if you want a good balanced book to read um a an, a bit of an antidote as it were to motorcycle roadcraft i would suggest that you take a look at my survival skills book it is effectively a riding course in a book and it's still available on my printer uh the spot lulu uh to actually download and have delivered to you they are still printing physical copies 
Okay, so where are we? Um, third story. Uh, yeah, um, zero. Now, um, just at the point at which uh, our attention was all getting distracted by the growing um, sense that there was something about coronavirus which was more of a problem than was immediately obvious, um, and uh, zero motorcycles, the US-based American uh, electric motorcycle manufacturer slipped a press release into the feed. Um, and what it did was it introduced a new machine uh, with the snappy title, the SR Stroke S. Um, and as it says, it features a sleek, full fairing design and revised ergonomics for elevated comfort and functionality built around Zero's package of industry leading power control and connection. And the SRS offers a unique riding experience. OK, so. All right, now I'll be up front. I haven't ridden this motorcycle uh, for obvious reasons. Um, I would like to get out there and give it a go and uh, find out what's happening with that particular machine. Um, but effectively, the big difference between this and the bikes I test rode last year, and I'll come back to those in a minute as well, um, is that it wraps a fairing around the rider. Now, um, just give you some numbers. The figures that uh, are claimed by Zero uh, are 110 horsepower. Forget that, it's not all that important um, because what really matters with these electric motorcycles is the torque. And the torque figure is 190 Newton meters. Now, um, I go and have a look at the spec figures of any other bike, and what you'll see is that absolutely dwarfs anything of a similar kind of speed um the the bike is supposed to have a top speed of somewhere around about 120 miles an hour um a, a good comparison is probably something like a versus or maybe my xj6 diversion and they will probably put out around about 60 newton meters of torque don't quote me on that go and check the figures for yourself but it will be somewhere in that order so basically what the zero is achieving with its electric motor is three times the torque now torque what is torque well it's twisting power basically it's what turns the back wheel it's what forces the back wheel to spin if you've got a lot of torque that back wheel will give that bike a huge shove forwards. Um, and that is effectively what you get from an electric motorcycle. Vast, vast amounts of torque. OK, 120 mile an hour top speed, pretty academic. Um, most of us won't be achieving top speed on motorcycles very often. Um, you know, it's, it's all very well having a sort of 180 plus mile per hour motorcycle. But how many times can you really, really use that? Uh, people say, I can use it on track. Really? Go and find a race circuit where you can get top speed uh, out of it. Where can you hit peak revs in top gear? Uh, there are very, very few tracks where you can actually exploit all that power. Uh, talk to any racers, and what they do is they gear the bikes down anyway. And, and you know, around Brands Hatch, for example, on the short circuit, uh, it, the big bikes are only using four gears, uh, having talk, having had talks from uh, some of the super bike riders. Um, so you're wasting, you're wasting all that uh, top end on those bikes. You can't get to it. So actually, you know, 120 mile an hour top speed is not so shabby. And it's that torque that really matters. Now, um, the... Um, what do I know about these bikes now um i rode the srf last year that's the sort of naked uh, bike that this machine is kind of built around um and what i came away with was a, a huge impression of a very very effective motorcycle um, now for those of you who still think that a motorcycle isn't uh, if it doesn't have a petrol engine i would honestly say you know open your mind think again um, I dare say there were people who at the dawn of the petrol powered motorcycle age thought that steam was probably the right way to propel a motorcycle and look what happened to them. Um, so as I say, the SRF didn't have a warp speed, uh, top speed, but it it's the way it gets there, which really matters. Um, 
you know, the, the, it's that shove off the line. Um, the other thing I hear people saying, doesn't sound like a motorcycle. Well, um, doesn't sound like a washing machine either, as I've also heard people say. Um, the motor actually produces quite an interesting sound. It's a bit like a jet engine spooling up. Um, and actually, what I found was, and as I was riding this bike along and accelerating down um, sort of residential streets away from the main roads, um, it actually turned heads because people heard it coming and turned around to see what it was. Uh, now, try that on your average Japanese motorcycle. Um, so the big change is the fairing, as I said. Um, um, funnily enough, I quizzed... Um, Dale Robinson, Zero's uh, UK manager, and he was the uh, manager at the time, I'm not sure if he still is, but I quizzed him when I had the test ride um, about the lack of a fared model. And one of the things I pointed out is that a naked is actually horribly unaerodynamic. You know, we're basically um, a brick is more aerodynamic than a naked motorcycle. So I, I was, you know, asking why. And he basically sort of said, well, uh, made in california you know people don't want fairings um so i was under the impression there were no plans for a fairing but uh, obviously that's all changed with the launch of the new model um the result is a claimed 13 percent improvement in highway efficiency uh, and range uh, compared with the naked bike now um, what else? Uh, the riding position has changed slightly, so it's a slightly more sit up. Uh, the wider bars, I believe, are slightly wider as well. Uh, pegs are slightly lower, so it's a bit of a slightly, slightly more relaxed riding position. The the, the F, SRF naked, I do find you kind of a little bit perched over the handlebars. Um, it reminded me rather of a Ducati Monster, the early 600s and 620s to ride, as it happened. Um, However, um, what about the looks? Well, I have to say that front on the fairings a bit too space invader for me. There's a sort of a, a bar of lights across the front, which could have come out of uh, close encounters or something. I don't particularly like that um, any more than I like some of the more wacky headlight designs on petrol engine bikes. Um, and to my mind, I have to say the fairing does look a bit like a bolt on afterthought. Uh, the srf has some i think some really rather nice lines it's got a really nice integrated look between the tank and the seat um and the tail uh sort of uh, bodywork but the the the, the fairing is actually very slab sided and i i don't think it actually fits well uh, with the styling of the bike however if it does the job hey ho um i'm not a fan of the colors either actually the srf that i rode was a really really lovely red um and the Two bikes at um, zero, or models at zero making for the Fed version are a sort of dark silvery grey colour, which I just think looks a bit there, and a blue, which isn't a um, isn't my favourite either. Um, what else? Well, the big issue with these bikes is still range and refuelling. Um, the claims are big; they claim a two hundred mile range, uh, but there will always say that that is best case scenario right okay um so how much are they likely to really do um i would say um that 200 miles uh, is a bit of an optimistic and it also relies on something called a, a charge tank now this is an optional extra if you can imagine that uh, where the petrol tank is um there isn't the petrol tank there's actually a hole um you can drop an extra battery into that, which gives the bike uh, uh, another, um, I can't remember how many miles, but it gives it an uh, extra sort of 20 miles or something, I seem to remember. Um, my experience on that SRF, which I rode last year, suggests that typical usage with that range extender fitted, um, you would probably get... Are somewhere around about 100 miles if you're using a mix of um, sport mode which is where all the power lives the eco mode which slows it down to still a pretty brisk motorcycle and if you're riding on a mix of uh, urban and open roads so that you're changing speed between 20 miles an hour and sort of 60 70 um so 100 miles, um, you'd have to decide whether that's sufficient for you. On the plus side, 
the SRF and its uh, derivative with the fairing. Um, they also have the capability to be rapidly charged. Um, and if you do, if you do put the rapid charger in, which unfortunately is an optional extra, you can go from a flat battery to 95% charged in 60 minutes. What that means effectively is that you can stop for a coffee, you know, take 20 minutes out for coffee, and you can get a chunk of chunk of charge in that battery, enough to probably get you another 20 or 30 miles. Um, so, okay, um, the price point, that's the other thing that people worry about with electric motorcycles. Well, they're not, they're not cheap. They're not outrageously expensive compared with some electric models I've seen. Um, I saw one which was apparently retailing for uh, £60,000 not so long ago. Well, the Zeros are a bit more reasonable. Um, the, the standard model, which comes with a 3 kilowatt rapid charger, uh, that starts at just over eighteen thousand uh, pounds. You can also buy an uprated premium model, which comes with a six kilowatt rapid charger, and you also get heated hand grips and wait for it aluminium bar ends, and that'll set you back uh, twenty one thousand as near as damn it. And that's all including the electric bike grant for which the government give you. Um, Dale Robinson, not surprisingly, is uh, fully enthused by the bikes, and uh, he said last year that he was seeing a shift in opinion on electric bikes, and he believes the threshold has been crossed and the bikes are now on the cusp of entering the mainstream. Um, I'm almost, but not quite with him there. I think there are still enough people who still doubt the electric bikes, but um, there's only one way to find out, and that's to understand what the, C, the, the SRs are about, and that's to go try one. If you're an intergalactic tourer, uh, then I would say the time's still not right for an electric bike. But if you're a commuter, uh, and if you're a rider who just rides 70, 80 miles um, when you go out for a ride, give it a go. Uh, it might well surprise you. Right, okay. Um, I seem to have taken rather longer talking about that than I was planning on. Um, so I'll just keep the uh, final piece fairly short um the i was um funnily enough i was uh, struggling to fix a slipping printer feed on a laser printer the this morning uh, failed miserably but i had to strip the uh, the printer down to get to the, uh, the, the the roller now i've stripped engines down in the past um i've performed emergency roadside repairs and quite honestly i can say that i got dirtier this morning working on that uh, printer than i have done riding uh, working on a motorcycle for quite a long time and if there's one way to check whether you're touching your face or not uh, cover your hands in uh, in toner and you'll very quickly discover where, where you're where you're touching it, your nose and what have you um so it's awkward to work on it's also filthy so the uh, there is a connection with what i was about to talk about which was clean motorcycle now um getting the bike clean is actually quite useful because not only does it look nice but there are several benefits too um, you can often see what's wrong with a motorcycle by uh, looking at it if it's clean. Um, one of the things that has uh, happened to on one of my bikes was a sprocket nut came loose. Um, I, I spotted that only because the bike was pretty clean and it was fairly obvious that the nut uh, was coming adrift. So I was able to get spanners out and bolt that all back up and check why it was why it was loose. Uh, let somebody else work on my bike, which is always a big mistake in my opinion. But there we go. Um, so, and secondly, if you're keeping the bike clean, it's far easier to get rid of the salty winter spray. Now, um, the, if you've got a, a shaft drive bike, you can look away now. But if you've got a chain drive bike, the first thing to do is get rid of all the chain clag. Um, the first thing I would recommend is that you don't use a spray on chain loop. There's a very good reason for that. Unless you start with a pristine clean chain, what you're doing is you're spraying that lube actually over muck which is already in the chain itself and the result is that what you actually do is you turn your uh, your chain lube into grinding paste very quickly indeed all that sticky stuff which sticks to the chain actually 
extracts tiny bits of grit and they get into the chain and what they do is they destroy the little x-ring seals which are the ones that are holding the real lubricant the, the lubricant that's really keeping your chain smooth which is actually sealed for life inside the chain so lubricants on the chain only need to protect the outside the rollers and basically to stop it going rusty so you don't need a heavy duty chain lube on a modern x-ring chain if you read the manufacturer's recommendations they all suggest that you use um, something like gear oil uh, a heavy oil which is designed for pieces of metal that are meshing but not something that attracts lots of grit and the good thing about gear oil is actually that it, it kind of flings off the chain uh, that's good because it takes the crap with it. The bad news is that it all gets over the back wheel. So you're going to need to degrease the back wheel. Now, there are any number of degreasers on the market. Go and have a look. Um, but what I would say is that you do need to be a little bit careful here. Um, you need to make sure that whatever you're using isn't aggressive uh, and is safe for use on rubber. Um, People use all sorts of strange things to try and clean their bikes. And uh, even some of their proprietary uh, things, you've got to be a little bit careful about. Now, um, you may remember if you've uh, followed the page recently that I suffered a uh, front wheel uh, flat. Uh, just start, I literally just finished a training course, uh, pulled in to conclude the course uh, with a trainee. Um, thought that's a bit odd, the front tire feels a bit flat. Um, went to put some air in it and the valve came off in my hand governor and when I looked at it it, it had perished and um, so um, I had to abandon the bike and get a new valve put in next day and when I checked the other bikes um, I had all of them had perished and uh, one of them was ready to fall off as well the other two were looking a bit sorry for themselves and the only thing I can put this down to is the the degreaser that I used on the back wheel. Um, so make sure that you clean the chain carefully. Again, you can use a proprietary chain degreasing spray. Get that nice and clean. And for whatever you do, never, ever, ever, ever use a chain uh, cleaner with the engine running. Never, ever touch the chain with the engine running. People regularly do. And they regularly come back with a missing finger or two. Um, so don't do it. Just turn it by hand, engine off. Um, that way the worst you'll do is pinch your finger in the chain and sprocket. But if it's running, it will cut your finger off. Um, don't use rags or anything like that around the chain when the engine is running. Just keep well clear. So clean the, clean the chain. You can use a brush. Um, use a proprietary chain cleaner or get the crap out is from between those links and when the chain's clean you can move on to the back wheel and as i say you'll need a, a stiff brush there work the chain cleaner in and then flush it away and really really clean it away um, there's lots of other nooks and crannies that this grease and crab will get into the rear the swinging arm the shock absorber um, and under the um, front sprocket cover take that off look at it and you'll find that there's it's usually caked with a a layer of crud and if that's built up to the point where it's so deep the chain's running through it however clean you make your chain you're just putting all the crud back on as soon as you spin it so dig all that out throw it away put that chain cover back on um, and when you've done that then it's time to talk about cleaning the rest of the bike and i'll come on to that next week um, so we've already reached the end of our allotted time it's uh 11.34, isn't it? It's remarkable, really, how quick the time goes by. Um, so anything else I wanted to say? Uh, that's pretty much it, really, for the day. Um, so I'll be back on Sunday, the next show, with some more news, views, and tips. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget to check out the regular posts here on Facebook. And uh, But for now, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully catch up with you next time out. All right, bye for now.